Hi viewers, newbies to the channel, friends. Welcome back to my channel here. Today, I would like to uh, show you one of my latest additions to my torch collection. Um, and I have wanted to share this for quite a while, but never really got around to it. Uh, I had to make a few pictures to show how it looks like, among other things. But here we are, today is the day. Uh, the torch in question is, as you can see in the description for the video, the Army Tech Wizard Pro. This is a fantastic light, let me just say that. This review, however, I will not go through all the technical details of this torch. You are able to Google that if you want to. What I rather want to do is to give you a little bit about why I'm using this torch and why I find it good. Because it is a technical wonder and it really is good at so many things, yet not good at everything. And um, so I think it is better to share why I'm using it rather than the specifications because that is at the end of the day just numbers. First off, I can say that when I started looking out for a torch, I wanted the torch that I could use primarily for caving. It's not that I do that much caving, but every now and then when I get out there, I need a torch that was reliable and I needed more than one torch really. So I do have my uh, LED Lancer MH10. Let me just find it here. Uh, that I don't know if you've seen the review of this one already, but the uh, LED Lens MS10 is really, really a nice torch and I would not change it for anything in the world. But it is a head torch and it basically just an only serves at a head torch. Sure, nothing prevents me from taking this in my hand and show it around or use it in my hand, but this particular torch here is so much more handy when it comes to that in terms of uh, versatility and size. So I wanted something that I could use out there. And some of the criteria was that it had to be waterproof, it had to be lightweight, it had to have a long battery life, and it had to be rocket so that if I should hit a rock or something like that, then it should be okay. So uh, finally, after a lot of search, uh, then I found this little baby. Now, I also wanted it to be a 90 degree light, as you can see. Normal torches, you'll have the LED in front. This one, you have it on the side. It doesn't make it for the most beautiful torch in the world, but I can tell you, I would not change this for anything. And I have now been using this for about a year. And um, well, like I said, it has more pros than it does have cons. So uh, if we just get down to what it is in pro, Oh, it fit my uh, criteria in terms of size. Perfect small size. The lamp itself, it is only at 65 grams when it's without battery and the batteries is 18650 batteries. And all you gotta do is just unscrew the bottom cap here. And with a little feather lock, then you got the batteries in here. One single battery, it's a power bank. And we'll lock it again. Furthermore, it is very strong. You can drop this from a height of 10 meters and you won't have it hurt. It won't break on you. Furthermore, you can actually have it submerged into 10 meters of water without having any problems. You can dive with it and use it uh, submerged. And those are very, very, very important criteria for me. The battery life is also very interesting because this one runs with the span of uh, 0.25 lumens all the way up to 2350 lumen uh, at its lowest setting to 0.25 lumen the uh, description states that this one can actually stay turned on for 200 days yes i'm not saying 200 hours i am talking about more than half a year 200 days now i would probably have a lot of other different problems that is much more urgent to be addressed than having light if i get 200 days need out of this torch but it's a good thing to have it's a good to have that extra margin and knowing that if you should end up in an emergency then you for sure will not suffer too much uh, in terms of light anyway um yeah and uh, the torch is turned on on the left side uh, of the torch and uh, you have various settings for this one. You can choose to have it, uh, the light blinking in the uh, not here, bottom here. If you want to at all times, that means you can find it whenever you might get lost. But uh, I have chosen to cut it off because I just don't like the light to be on all the time. 
Uh, but how you do that is a combination of twisting the bottom and holding the bottom up here and, and stuff like that. I ain't gonna get too much into detail. Uh, another pro is the clip here. The clip, I really like it and it's a permanent on my torch uh, because this way I can clip it into my belt, I can clip it into a strap on my back, I can clip it into a pocket, whatever I want, and it will always give me uh, light wherever I direct the light, so to speak. But apart from that, it also comes with a headband. Just get that for you here. The headband is a... Uh, it's very good, very comfortable, and it's like a three strap kind of thing. You have the strap around your head and you got the strap above your head too. You can take this uh, top part off if you don't like it. But obviously if you are running for instance or doing something where you are bumping around, this will just maintain its, its position on your head all the time. And I don't use the headband much to be fairly honest, so um, I, I can't really talk too much about how, how good it is in the long run. I used it a few times. The final advantage that I want to mention on this one is the magnet charging. You don't need to take the batteries out of this baby. All you gotta do is just plug it into a USB port and with a magnet here you have a charge you have it charging. I don't use this so much though because uh, all my equipment or at least my uh, LED lens or MH10 is also the 18650 battery and the third torch I have, a normal hand torch, is the same thing, 18650 battery. And I don't uh, like to charge all of them separately, although they can be separately charged by the USB access, but I have battery charger for it, so I'll just take it out, swap the battery and charge it externally. But the fact that you can do it, and that is effortlessly and it just clicks in, it is not something that you have to make sure that it's fitted right, to charge right or anything. It just automatically finds its own way. I really, really like that feature. So um, that was the positive parts of these, uh, this torch here. On the downside, and there obviously is downsides as well. Well, first off would probably be worth mentioning is the price. This little baby here comes in at about $80 last time I checked. And for some, it might be a bit of a high price tag for a small torch. But I can tell you after using this for a year, it's definitely worth it. I had a Phoenix TK15 before and it cost me, as far as I remember, just about the same. But it only lasted me a little less than a year and something malfunctioned in it and never got to work again. Uh, this one here really has been put through its paces and it works. Uh, the second uh, bad thing about this one is actually just a matter of getting used to, I'd say. But it is the fact that this torch does not have a beam light. It only has floodlight. Now, as you can see on this picture that I took out in the forest, there's a comparison between the MH10 and the Armitech Pro Wizard Pro here. Then on flood, the flood on the Wizard Pro is so much wider than on my MH10. Um, and well, that's one thing. But the second thing is, while you can bring this up to 2350 lumen, you will get a reach which is far better than many other torches that has got beam light. Like for instance, uh, my MH10 has got beam light. This one has, up, like I said, 2350 lumen, while my MH10 has got up to 600 lumens. Uh, so though you have a lot of spill light, you could say by only having a floodlight that when you, if you really bring it up to the highest lumen, then you can see far away, but you will also be able to see everything to the left and to the right. Uh, so that being a disadvantage is really at the end of the day, a matter of uh, reference. I, or preference, I like it now as I'm getting used to it. I really don't like the, the beam light uh, as much as I thought I would uh, need it. Uh, the last bit of downside con that I have on this is actually also just a detail, but that's how it is all the time with cons usually, isn't it? Uh, this one here clips into the headband with this little um, this this little holder here, but when you're doing that, you have to unclip your clip here because it just would be in the way. But otherwise than that, it's very simple. You just well, I'll just show you. Just take it off. Oh, ah, it's very strong. You just clip it into these uh, grooves that are already made on the lamp, like this. 
boom, it is there. And it's already, as it is, tight and fit. It won't just rattle out on you, but just for safety, they have this little rubber band here, and you just take it and pull it over in a knot, as it is like there, and you have your torch secured on your headband. And, and this way you can turn it the way you want it. If you want to light upwards or downwards or straight forward. As it is sitting on your head like this. Well, obviously you can choose whether you want the, the, not, uh, the bottom to turn the light on to the left or to the right, up or down, or whatever. But as it's sitting here, it is very easy to adjust. It's no problem. You can have it whatever way you want it. But for some, and even for me actually in the beginning too, it was a little weird to have the, the light off-centered a bit. But once you get used to it, it really doesn't matter either. It is just a very good and comfortable light to be wearing. So how does it work? Well, like I said, it has a lot of settings. Basically, it has so many settings that when you start out with this one, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, because how to remember how to set it and how to remember changing between the different settings and so on and so forth. But I can tell you it is very easy. Well you just got to understand it is a let's just see three six eight it's got ten different settings divided into four groups. So you have the low lumen setting that is the low group one it is 0 0.25 lumens two and seven lumens that's the low group the middle group is 40 lumen 210 lumen and 500 lumen that's the middle group and then you have got you can say the thrust group or the uh, yeah panic light blue or whatever and the level and that is uh, 1250 and 2350 lumen now the last one you don't use it all that much because it just grows hot but then you have further on top of that you have strobe light but let me just show you how it works you turn it on by a simple click on the bottom now this one starts out in the lowest setting lumen and you can hardly see anything uh, with this one. But as you can see in the picture here, I just took a picture of my arm. Then uh, this is what you get when you look at uh, 0.25 lumen in a forest where you have a very little ambient light. But if you were in a cave, it would be working even more efficiently. To uh, toggle through the three settings in the lowest uh, level, you just hold the bottom and it clicks up right away to the next uh, level here. Now we are at uh, two lumen and uh, then we can hold it furthermore. And now we are at seven level. Now, even with a good spotlight here in the office, you can see the light on the table. So it is it's very simple. You just hold it in there and now we're back on uh, 0 0.25 level. And uh, you can see the light here is also flashing sometimes. Let me try again, hold it there. And now we are up at two levels, about two lumens. And then we have one more here, and that is seven lumen. Now, if I want to have it up further, I want to bring it up to, let's say, the next level. All I gotta do is close the light, and then I'll just take it here, push the button twice. There you are. Now we are at the next level. Whether we are at one or another, I don't know. Let's just take it here. Yes, we started out in the high end, uh, but this one is 40 lumen. Now to toggle through that, same thing, hold the bottom, there you are, you are now at 210 lumen, and up here we are now at 500 lumen. The 500 lumen and the two, uh, 40 lumen are the one I'm using normally. Go back to 40 lumen, this is how it looks like in my office when you just look at it, but if you take a picture here, then this is how it looks like when, I'm, uh, when you're looking from the side of the torch. Uh, towards uh, the nature, and if I bring it up to 500 lumens, this one here, well, then we are looking at the picture, the same thing, 500 lumen ahead. As you can see, you can see quite a bit out there. So there's really no reason for you to go much higher than that. So those are the two settings that I normally use. But just for reference, then this is uh, the 210 lumen out in the forest. All right. Uh, if you then want to go further up, you want to go to the extraordinary sharp low light, then you just push it three times for level three. And now we are at 2350 lumen and we are here at 1350 lumen. And this is what it corresponds to in the nature. This is uh, 1350 on the picture 
and this is how it looks like on the table, but this is how it looks like on the nature. The difference between 1350 and 2350 is really not that much. It is uh, relatively much in terms of uh, um, the energies used on it. You only have about one hour of light, but to that being said, I'm now have this light turned on for a few seconds. This one glows very hot, so I would not recommend using it too much and too long in that way. You cannot put it in your pocket when you do it. So, 40 and 200, now it's 40 and 500 lumen is really the only thing that I use. Uh, 40 would be in the campsite when I'm just uh, mingling around trying to find my stuff and do things without straining my eyes too much. And 500 that'll be if I'm out there hiking and uh, spending more time on a distance then I'll be using 500, which will also save me more batteries. When you then want to go down in the different groups, it's very easy, you just press it twice there you are, and now we're down in group number one, and we are down at uh, seven lumens, I can see, because this is 0 0.25 lumen. But there was a last little one here on this uh, torch here as well, and that was the strobe light. Now, let's just get there. Strobe light is simple. It was the fourth group. You just push it four times. There you are. And in the strobe light, I have two different settings on this one here. I have this one where it's uh, regularly just with a quite of a pause in between the light flashes, or as I could do by holding in the bottom like the other times when you want to toggle through the settings in each level, hold it in. And now we have a setting with lower, um, same frequency, but lower light, and we hold it in again, and we got flashing full beam. So, and one push, and we're all done. So those are the levels that we have on this one. So yeah guys, I just wanted to, to show you why I love this little one here and uh, whenever I see something, whenever I get to use something, whenever I get the pleasure finally to make an investment that really makes a difference in my pack, I'd like to share it with you when I really have confirmed that I got my hands on something good. That was all I had for you right now. Until next time, stay curious.